Good morning. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Welcome. Welcome to First Christian Church. Glad that you are here. Glad that you have come out on this uh, brisk Sunday morning here in the month of February. Uh, let us know that you are here with us. You got uh, some connection cards in your bulletin. Those of you that are online, you got uh, a little message chat. Uh, give us a little shout out there. Uh, we're always grateful when we hear from folks that are part of our time of worship. And if you're looking at us on YouTube in the future, but for you it's the present, uh, let us know that way that you are uh, checking us out as well. Uh, a couple of, uh, of announcements. Our monthly loaves and fishes dinner is uh, today from 4 to 6. Uh, so you can swing by the church, pick up dinner, uh, and, uh, and have that for your supper tonight. Or if you want to help out, uh, there's always, uh, always room for extra, extra hands. So uh, in a couple of weeks, we're having Skeddy and Skits. That is our, our, our fun dinner and talent show night. Uh, we can have Skeddy and Skits without any Skeddy. We proved that last year. We had a great time without any Skeddy. Uh, but we can't have Skeddy and Skits without any Skits. So uh, unless uh, we get some folks that are willing to uh, submit some Skits or sign up to do a Skit, uh, we're going to have uh, the youth group doing a skit. We're going to be having Chuck just playing a tuba, and I'm pretty sure Bill Dowie's just going to be banging on a steel drum for like 20 minutes. Um, and nobody wants any of that except the youth group. And Chuck, right, right. And, you know, steel drums are cool, but uh, <laughs> so really, we're hoping that Bill Dowie will have those steel drums going. I have it on good authority that he has a couple, so. Uh, so, Skeddy and Skits, March 6th, sign up. You can uh, submit uh, an act for that show in a couple of different ways. You, if you want to record it and get it to the church, uh, it will be part of the live stream. If you want to be here that night and perform it live, because we're going to do it both in person and on uh, Facebook Live, you can do it live. Uh, but if you need help getting it recorded, uh, we can do that uh, for you as well. So just let us know. So a lot of different ways that you can uh, have um, uh, have your act, whatever it may be, something, a song, a dance, a skit, a poem, a story, whatever you want. Uh, maybe it's a, you know, a reenactment of what you see on Sunday morning through your eyes. I don't know. Just planting seeds out there. So getting sits coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, by now, you noticed again in the bulletin uh, our uh, week of compassion information. We continue to uh, to consider and focus on this year's week of compassion theme and our offering towards it. Love remains is the theme. We invite you to continue to prayerfully consider how you can support this important ministry. And we're going to talk a bit more about week of compassion today. And the last thing I want to mention, out in the gathering area and down below, you might see a couple of big boxes. Those are for some e-cycling. If you got some old electronics, they are a little specific of what you can, can put in these boxes, uh, but the memo was out, uh, sent out earlier this week uh, explaining what all could go into those boxes, but we're uh, partnering with this uh, local company that recycles uh, e-waste and does it in a no landfill kind of way. Uh, so they make sure that everything gets recycled. Um, and they're going to recycle a number of things that we have around here at the church. There is a bit of a, a somewhat of a cost for some of the things that we're going to get rid of, but you're uh, getting rid of some things that you got sitting around your house that you're not using will help offset those costs. So win-win. Uh, so you get to clean out some of the old electronics that are sitting about your house uh, in, a, in a safe and environmental way, and you help the church get rid of uh, the same kind of stuff that's sitting around here. So please uh, consider um, uh, getting rid of some of your electronic waste. Those boxes, I think, will be around till the end of the month or so. Uh, so that's uh, what's happening with those. So more information about what else is happening in the life of the church is in your bulletin. Uh, of course, the February issue of the Pathways. Check it out and see how you can be a part of what's happening. But as I mentioned, we do continue to intentionally consider our support of Week of Compassion, the Relief, Refugee, and Development Mission Fund of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada. And among their, uh, the materials that they have available uh, on their website, they share these words that lead us into worship this day. And 
they say, we are yearning for the day, the day of God's hope made real, the day when nobody is hungry, nobody thirsty, the day of God's love flowing freely. Shade from sun and shelter from the wind, the compassionate one guides us to the springs of living water in the world and in mighty deed. So let us worship our God. Let love flow. So let us in this place, let us be open to the compassionate one whose love flows to us. Let us open ourselves that love flows into us. And let us open ourselves up so that when we go forth from this place, that love flows from us to all, so that all will know the love of the compassionate one. So let us worship, and let us continue in this time of worship as we take in the sharing of our opening hymn, Ancient Words. Let us worship. If you are following the words in the insert, I would recommend that you pay attention to the words on the screen. Instead, there are two phrases in the second verse that are wrong in your insert. So... Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope. In this world where we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith handed down to this age came to us through sacrifice. Oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Good morning, First Christian Family. First Christian Family. Oh Hi, man, Jim. that was pretty bad. I know it's cold outside, but hello, good morning, First Christian family. Okay, that's better. Now I'm gone. Okay, but I better not go too far. I promised Lindsay no more Lindsay stories. I caught heck all week long for that last week. So we'll be a straight shooter today. But my aim's not very good, so be careful. <clears throat> Let us start in prayer. Dear loving and giving God, <clears throat> 
May your spirit lead us through this time of worship. Help us put into action our words and our faith as we stretch ourselves beyond these church walls to places across the world. We come to you as one people with many backgrounds, traditions, gifts, and callings. We gather to celebrate our oneness, to remember your son's devotion of complete love to all mankind. We know that when we love and give to others, we are loving and giving to you. Amen. In a world so filled with brokenness and sorrow, it would be easy to lose ourselves in never-ending grief, to be choked by our outrage, to be paralyzed by the enormity of suffering, to feel our hearts squeeze tight with hopelessness. Instead, this morning, let us simply breathe together as we hold our hearts open, breathing in as our hearts fill with compassion, breathing out as we pray for healing in our world and in our lives, breathing in, opening ourselves to the transforming power of love, breathing out as we pray for peace in our world and in our lives, breathing in as we hold hope in our hearts, breathing out as we pray for justice in our world and in our lives. May we know our strength, may we be filled with courage. May our love flow from us into this world. Through our week of compassion, may our love indeed flow into the whole world, helping to bring hope and healing to those facing disaster, showing God's care near and far. So breathe, and with open hearts and compassion, show our commitment to God's love, hope, and peace in Christ. Now go and share your commitment of God's peace with one another. Peace to you all.
Great to hear. Great to hear the chancel choir. Thanks, Chuck, for making that recording and to our choir for being here to record it. <coughs> all right, well, kiddos of all ages, wherever you may be, gather around. As I've mentioned a couple of times, we're talking about our weeks of compassion. We're talking about week of compassion for several weeks. That's why around here we call it weeks of compassion. So I want to ask you guys a question. You know, what's the difference between a need and a want, right? A need is something that we can't live without, right? You guys know that much, of course. And a want is something that we really could live without, right? And like there, so let's do a little pop quiz, right? Pop quiz, hot shots, here we go, ready? Clean water to drink. Need, absolutely. Healthy food to eat. Need. A PlayStation 5. A want. That was, that was, uh, I thought I might trick up the balcony up there. Especially the dad. A 75 inch TV. Want, right. That's okay. You can, you can go back and erase your answer. No, wait. I, uh, all right. A warm, safe place to live. That's a need, right? Medicine when you're sick. All right? School to go to. <laughs> I want to go to a, <laughs> go back to school, right? <laughs> Who here doesn't want to go back to school? You know, right? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Last one. A new 5G iPhone 12. A need. Oh, you're right. You're right. All right. But what if I need to have a phone that will remind me of, say, my anniversary and my wife's birthday. That's a need, right? <laughs> I need to remember those things, right? All right, well, it's a little wiggle. It's kind of a gray area, but you're right. That's a one. Big, fancy phone, that is definitely a one. All right, okay, all right, here's the actual last one. Compassion. Is that a need or a want? need absolutely right compassion is definitely a need all of us need someone to offer us compassion you know, all the time but particularly at times in our lives when we're really struggling and really having a hard time right so we know the, the difference between a need and a want so here <clears throat> i want to show you guys a magic trick right I know, it's like, wait, wait a second, where is he going with this, right? So I got a magic trick, right? So I got this box here, our Week of Compassion box, and there's a whole bunch of them out in the gathering area, right? So anybody that wants to grab one afterwards, you guys, too, can do this magic trick yourselves, right? So check this out. I got our Week of Compassion box here, and I'm going to take, I'm just going to take a, a nickel, and check this out. Boom. I just turned this into a need, right? Check this out, I got a dime. I'm gonna turn, turn it from a dime into, oh, a need, right? Here's a dime and a nickel. Turn them into needs, a quarter. Boom, turn that into a need, right? And this dollar bill, ah, ah, ah. Well, it'll go in there, trust me. Ah, ah, ah. There it goes, turn that into a need. Magic, just like that, right? You know how that works? So every time we put a coin or even a dollar bill or other kinds of bills in here, we turn them into needs because Week of Compassion takes these things that we put in here, the coins, the money, and they turn them into the things people need in the midst of times in their lives where they need compassion. And they turn these things into, into clean water, Medicine, a warm blanket, a safe place to live. Every time we put something into this box, it gets turned into meeting someone's need. And that's what our church is doing during our weeks of compassion. We are taking a special offering and we are turning it into acts of compassion for people who need our compassion. And those acts of compassion are to make sure that 
Everybody who finds themselves in a time of need gets what they need through the compassion that we offer through these boxes. So I us all consider how we can share the compassion that we all need when we need it with those who need it themselves. Let's pray together. Dear God, please help us offer compassion to those in need. Amen. John Lennon's now iconic song asks us to imagine. But his, call, but his call is tinged with sadness and even hopelessness for our truly being able to realize a more just, a more abundant, a more peaceful world for each and every person. But we who know the good news of the gospel know that such imagining is not simply a wishful dream. We know what the Apostle Paul knew when he wrote those closing lines to the Ephesian church, where he praised God as the one who, indeed, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. For Paul is right. God's power is at work within us. And that power is the power to imagine and to help make better a world, a reality for God's children. So think of the week of compassion offering as more than we can imagine. And God's power has been and will continue to be at work with your gifts in more ways than you can imagine. Through refugees, finding safe haven, through those battered by hurricanes, through development projects, making clean and safe water available, a need, and so much more. Your gifts work around the world, around the year, to bring the love and hope of God in more ways than indeed we can imagine. Your offerings may be given online at the church website, or via mail to the church office, or just simply dropping your envelopes on the way out of the service. Imagine. Let us pray. Holy and generous God, God, we pray. we pray that you would grow these gifts to bless the world. We imagine a world with enough food, enough water, with resources, education, justice, laughter, and freedom from all of your pe people. Do with our gifts even more than we can imagine and make of us a loving and generous people. Amen. God's word for us today comes from, from Matthew's gospel, familiar text to all of you, I'm sure. Chapter 11, verses 
28 to 30, just a short, simple pericope that share with us the words of Jesus, who says to us in Matthew, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. In her seminar, The Power of Vulnerability, Dr. Brene Brown talks about cultivating authenticity, connection, courage, and resiliency. In one session, she tells about the time Hurricane Ike hit Texas where she and her family live. For more than two weeks in late September, after the storm, their home was without power. The roads around their community were difficult to traverse because trees were still down and traffic lights were not working. And late September in Texas is still plenty hot at 90 to 95 degrees and 100% humidity, which means, Brown explains, you have to sleep with the windows open, but, quote, the mosquitoes were, were as big as your fists. <laughs> Add in to all of that, both of her young children came down with strep throat. It was at this two-week mark when a good, close friend, who happened to be a trained, licensed therapist, calls Brown and asks, How are you doing? To which Brown answers, I'm really good. I'm so grateful. Things could have been so much worse. Because, you know, people in Galveston and the Bay Area lost their homes, literally. So it could have been worse. We have a generator, so really, we are okay. I'm just really grateful. To which her friend and trained licensed therapist retorts, Pants on fire. And Brown responds, what? what? What do you mean? The friend said, oh my God, save that line for other people. How are you really? And with that bit of true friend-encouraging safe space, Brown sounds off. I am so angry, and I'm hot, and I'm covered in mosquito bites, and this is bull. I can't do laundry, the kids are sick, we don't have any good food, and on and on Brown vented. And her friend listened. Then after some time, the friend said, yeah, okay, so tell me then. Now, you're probably thinking this trained licensed therapist is going to say something deeply wise and profound to soothe and comfort her friend, and you are right. She does, but it's not what you think, so brace yourself. The friend says, yeah, okay, so tell me then, who would you kill? (laughs) And Brown again sounds off. Oh my God, I would totally kill these three people. Kill them, dead. And then I would leave their bodies in the backyard to attract the mosquitoes away from my house. (laughs) Then the Fred said, awesome. Now tell me what else would be awesome. A shower. And then coming out of the shower into an air-conditioned home. Oh, that does sound good. Okay. What else? And in a changed tone, Brown says, well, actually, that's it. Okay, then. Now, how do you feel? And Brown says, I feel better, stronger. I can do this. And her friend says, yeah, save that whole I'm grateful thing 
for someone else. You just had a hurricane go over top of your house. Your kids are sick. You have no electricity, no fresh food. You get to be tired and frustrated. But you can do this. You are strong. Brown and her family and the community were tired and frustrated. They were carrying a heavy burden. Do you think they needed rest? Of course. We know the need for rest. Maybe not in the a hurricane just went over our house kind of way, but we know what it feels like to be so tired, frustrated, and angry that we can think the unthinkable. Fear and brokenness cause such too. But we only think about it. Right? We wouldn't do it. And Brown wasn't going to kill anyone. Her friend wasn't actually encouraging her to kill anybody. She was asking such an extreme question because extreme circumstances require extreme efforts and methods to help others find rest, strength, peace, and find the capacity to say and believe, I can do this. As people of faith, we ask extreme questions. We don't ask, who would you kill? But we say something just as extreme. We say things like, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. I love our text for today for so many reasons. And because I do, if you have been to any of the funerals I've officiated over the last <laughs> years, chances are good you've heard this text. I usually I use it frequently because these words of Christ are true and relevant in times of death, bodily death for sure but also in times when we are dying inside because the varied circumstances of life around us are crushing us with a weight and a burden we cannot hold. These words of Jesus remind us he is stronger than any burden, and he can and will give us rest. And while in this text Jesus says, Come to me, we know Jesus also went to where the weary, the troubled, the tired, the angry, the frustrated, the scared, and the lost were. And he held space for them where they were so that those who were carrying such heavy burdens, those who were being crushed by heavy burdens, could find rest. Rest. When life's varied circumstances become such that we are weary, troubled, tired, frustrated, angry, scared, lost, and no longer have the strength to carry life's heavy burdens, Jesus gives us rest. And that rest comes in different ways. Rest comes when the soul returns to God, for sure. But the rest of Christ comes to the here and now, where we are in all of life's varied circumstances, by those who know what Jesus can do, and through those who are willing to help share his invitation. His invitation to come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. On the night of December 10th to 11th, exactly two weeks before Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, deadly tornadoes tore across western Kentucky. The destruction left in the wake of these storms was unthinkable, especially in the town of Mayfield, Kentucky, where First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, is located. 
for the church building and church sanctuary, not all that different from ours, First Christian Church of Mayfield is a church that has stood and ministered and offered sources of hope, peace, joy, and love, sources of rest for generations. This was First Christian Church of Mayfield on the morning of December 10th. And this was First Christian Church of Mayfield on December 11th. What had stood for decades was knocked down in moments. What had been a church, safe space, a place for rest for countless people was gone. And yet, among the rubble, dirty but otherwise unscathed, stood this. The communion table and the cross that sat upon it. Looks a little familiar, doesn't it? Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In the days following the devastation, crews representing media outlets from around the world descended upon Mayfield, Kentucky, and frequently interviewed folks, including the pastor of First Christian Church, Reverend Dr. Milton West. In one interview, famed Today Show anchor Al Roker asked Dr. West, how have you counseled your prisoners as we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas? And there's not a lot to celebrate right now. In response, Pastor West said, I guess that depends on your perspective. Our faith gives us reason to experience joy. All the normal emotions you go through when you lose something of value, your spiritual home, for lack of a better term, what you try to do is reframe and rethink what it all means and not overinterpret it. There are a lot of people out there who would say this is a sign from God that something is wrong. We do not embrace that notion at all. Our faith is positive, and God is never the author of bad things in people's lives. So we grieve, we cry, we hug, and we pull ourselves together, and we take the next step in trying to recover. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. On Tuesday, December 14th, Kentucky Regional Minister Reverend Dr. Don Gillette visited several communities in Kentucky impacted by the tornadoes and storms, along with staff from Week of Compassion. Among the places they traveled was First Christian Church of Mayfield, Kentucky. On this pastoral visit, they shared prayers and words of comfort that had been offered by so many from across the wider church. Additionally, they visited the leaders from First Christian Princeton and First Christian Dawson Springs who were already in Mayfield helping to sift through the debris and recover personal and sacred items from the destruction. Dr. Gillette reflected, In my visit, it was hard to see the devastation the storm had left, to see homes wiped out and families displaced. But in that, I felt the Spirit of God moving in the resilience and strength of the people and the resilience of the church to continue to be the church by sending out crews, by being a presence of Christ's hope, compassion, empathy, and love. Even with the church that was destroyed, First Christian of Mayfield, I saw hope, I saw joy. Even in the midst of the despair, I saw Christ being displayed. We know it's going to be a while, but we know with Christ, all things are possible. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. With Christ, all things are possible. 
including rest. But in extreme circumstances, extreme efforts and methods are required to help others find the rest they need so they can find the capacity to say and believe, I can do this. And this truth becomes so very important for us to hear again today because this is the partnership, the ministry, the possibilities we help make possible when we support the efforts of Week of Compassion, the Relief, Refugee, and Development Mission Fund of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Week of Compassion is more than just a week. It is a ministry of the whole church reaching those in need around the world, around the year. Anytime Week of Compassion responds to a need, be it in the United States or anywhere in the world, together we bear witness to the unity of Christ's communion table. A table that embodies the life, death, resurrection, and invitation of Jesus, who says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. Friends, let's join together and go to God through our prayers, and let us keep in our prayers those in our church family, our friend Betty, who continues to be in a rehab facility, my friend Lynn, who was in the hospital last week, he is back home and doing well. My friend Joyce, who we heard just today took a fall and we need to be tending to the result of that fall. So let us keep them in our prayers. Let us pray. Living and loving God, we come to you as one people with many backgrounds, traditions, gifts, and calling. We gather to celebrate our oneness, to remember your Son's devotion of complete love to all humankind, and to give of what we can to sisters and brothers across our nation and our world who find themselves in need. God of love, you created us to love you and one another. We confess we have sometimes limited that love to words and failed to make that love real by our actions. We confess we have failed to recognize Christ in the hungry, the thirsty, the homeless, the naked, the incarcerated, the refugee, and the sick. We confess we have too often turned away from your presence Believing there is little to nothing we can do, failing to share what we have with our brothers and sisters in need. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for holding back our love. Forgive us for limited actions. Forgive us for looking the other way and believing we are not enough to make any kind of difference. Forgive us. Then turn our hearts and guide us to follow you in your ways anew so that where you are, we are, and where we are, you are. Challenge us to include those who are in need in our prayers and through our generosity, whether here in our own community or on the other side of the globe. May we always be striving to serve as Christ serves, those recovering from a disaster, fleeing as refugees or asylum seekers, suffering as victims of violence in any form, attempting to avoid the daily grind of poverty. Call upon us to share what we have so that others may receive what they need to live the abundant life Christ offered us all. Dare us to be where you would have us be, offering hope and love with compassion as Christ has shown us. We ask you to listen now to the prayers deep within our hearts as we offer them in this time of holy silence.
All this we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We pray to us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us gather together around our Lord's table and let us do so as we take in the sharing of our communion here. shine the twelve disciples and the table spread now in our turn Christ bids us for the wine and in remembrance bless and break the bread we see by faith upon the cross displayed his body broken and his blood outpoured in that dread robe of majesty arrayed, we gaze in worship on the dying Lord. Dead for our sins, yet reigning now above, Still to our hearts we find his presence given. Take for ourselves the pledges of his love. For taste and token of that feast in heaven. So send us out to love and serve and praise. Filled with his spirit, as the master said, love, joy, and peace, the wine of all our days. Christ and his life, our true and living bread. When we come to this communion table, or if we come to either communion table in those pictures, even though it's the same one, we find the same presence, the presence of Christ. The presence of Christ on days that are good and perfect and serene, We also find the presence of Christ on those days when everything around us is crumbling. Christ stands there amongst us, amongst the good days, amongst the storms, ready to offer us all that we need. The reminder that we are strong because of Christ's strength 
a reminder that we are not alone because of Christ's presence. A reminder that no matter what, we can do this because with Christ all things are possible. So let us come to this table to find Jesus once again in the midst of whatever is happening around us, whether a good day or whether a day where the burdens we carry are just too heavy. But here at this table, we come and find Christ Jesus who gives us rest. For it was on that night before Jesus was crucified that he gathered with his disciples and shared with them a meal. It was during that meal he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, Take and eat of this, all of you. For this bread represents my broken body, broken for you. Take and eat of it and do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, Jesus took a cup and he gave it to his disciples saying to them, Take and drink from this, all of you. For this cup represents my shed blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. Friends, let us come to this table. Let us share in this bread and in this cup. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Now let us pray. O oh, holy God, how do we lift our thanks to you? For you have blessed us in the bread and cup far beyond anything we deserve. With an abundance of gifts and a compassion of heart that defies our imagination. May the immunity of express at this table go with us as we work in your fields for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Come to me, Jesus says. Come to me, all you that are weary, all you that are tired and frustrated and scared, all you, that, all you that are filled with joy. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and I will give you everything you need. Let us hear again those words of Jesus, that invitation of Jesus. And let us consider how it is we will respond. And 
May we do so as we take in the sharing of our hymn of invitation number 479. We have heard the joyful sound. have heard a joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the gladness all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo, black ocean caves, earth shall keep the jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom When the heart for mercy craves Sing it in oh, the grave Jesus saves, Jesus saves It's a good robust song to send us forth with Jesus saves. Jesus saves us with all that we need. So let us go forth as those who have received what we need from Christ our Savior. Let us go forth as those who know that we can give our burdens that we cannot carry to the one who can, and that we will find rest for our souls. Let us go forth as those who are aware of that as those who have experienced such. And let us go forth ready to share that good news with others. For no doubt there are many who are carrying heavy burdens that they cannot, that they cannot carry anymore. Let us give to them a reminder, an invitation, an opportunity to know that there is someone who will carry it for them and who will give them rest. And that they may find themselves here some Sunday morning to begin to find who it is that gives that to them. Or find us online so that they can begin to find that they can give that heavy burden to the one who will give them rest. So as you go forth to share that good news, may the grace of God, the constant and abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, and the unconditional love of Jesus Christ rests and abide with each and every one of you, now and forevermore. Amen. And if your children are here for youth bell choir today, we're going to be meeting up in the balcony right after church. If you would let the others know. Thank you. Give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves.